Hi everyone, my name is Kay Kaltoff and welcome to a Stamping to Share video. Today I'm going to share with you the mechanics for making a pop and twist card. This is the beautiful card that I received from my assistant and she gave me permission to put it on video so I'm so grateful for that. But it was kind of a, oh, you could say we worked on it together because I kind of helped her perfect the pop and twist motion. And so that's what this looks like, the pop and twist part of it. And then the decorating, of course, can be done on any pop and twist card. The decorating on this card uses the carousel birthday stamp set along with the cupcakes and carousel 6x6 six six designer series paper. But we'll do the decorating in a different video. So let me set this aside and let me show you the card that started it all. This is a beautiful Christmas card that I received from Susie Wood. And so this is the original card that got me interested in a pop and twist. And as I mentioned, Susie Wood gave this to me. And when you open it up, just like in our other card, you have this wonderful pop and twist action. Now, she gave me this around Christmas, and I promised her I would get one back to her in the mail by Valentine's. Well, I don't know. It's not going to be a Valentine's card. I'm actually going to make this cupcakes and carousel card for her. But... It, it took me a while to figure this all out. I will show you. Susie was so nice. She gave me a lot of the instruction that I needed to recreate the pop and twist part because she said she had watched a lot of videos on YouTube and found them quite confusing. So she said she simplified it and she gave me a template along with you know, the pop and twist part in the center of the card. The only problem is um, there's several steps and of course I... I think I lost steps one and two, and so that didn't help very much, but I did have this template here. But there were just so many score lines. There's a score line through the center, a score line here. There's all these um, diagonal score lines, and it was just um, kind of hard to figure out. And so I just sat down and I put my head down to it, and I came up with, I think, an even easier way to do a pop and twist card. Now, I know there's those pop and twist cards where you actually don't have these side panels. You're just working with the center section here. But if you want to elevate your card to the point where it has these really cool layers in, then you're going to need these side panels. So this is a pop and twist card with side panels. So I'm going to put Susie's instructions aside and show you the ones that I came up with. So here are the instructions that I came up with. You are going to start with a piece of cardstock that you want in a color that you want to have bordering in your card. Now the card that Susie did, her cardstock on the inside part of her card was crumb cake. And on the card that my downline, Kim did, she has her border in So Saffron. And because we're recreating Kim's card in this video session, we are going to start with So Saffron. So this is the template that you'll want to use, and it's actually quite easy. Just start with an eight and a half by 10 and a half inch piece of paper, and then you're going to score it at five and one fourth, which is just right down the center here. And then you're gonna make some tick marks. You're gonna make a tick mark at one inch and at nine and a half inches. And you'll do this at the top and at the bottom. And then you're going to take a ruler and your bone folder and you'll make the score lines going diagonally on those tick marks. And so this is the paper that I am going to keep so that I can always remember how to make this card. So let me set this aside. So the first thing that we're going to do is just fold it in half. And then we are going to go ahead and we are going to fold it on those diagonal lines. We'll do that again. And now we have something that folds like this, and this is what's going to open up inside of our card. 
Now the base of our card is a piece of Watermelon Wonder. I have this cut at four and one fourth by 11 inches, and then I've scored it at five and a half. So this, this yellow panel is going to fit on this panel, except there's a little problem. It's winged way out, and so we need to cut that down. So we could do that on our Stampin' Up! trimmer, but sometimes, just to keep it simple, I like to go ahead and make a template. It's just faster for me, I don't know about you. But this template is going to be a little shy. By shy, I mean it's a shade smaller than two and one fourth by four inches. So I'm just going to line that up here in the corner, and I'm going to take a pencil, and I'm just going to draw a line all around this template. And I'm going to do that on all four corners. All right, so I have that done, and you might be wondering why I wanted to make this template shy. Well, that's so we can cut on the outside of these pencil lines so they don't show up. Now again, you could go ahead and cut this with a trim tool, but for me, it's just as fast to do it with a scissors. All right, so we have our, our little cutout ready to go, and this is what's going to be on the inside of our card. Now let's see if it fits. So here's our card base. We can fold that along the score line, and it's going to fit right in here. So we would just want to glue it in place, and yes, that's going to work beautifully. Once this is scored and before it's folded, you could go ahead and do your cutaways and then cut it out. Then you wouldn't have to fight those score folds. But I did want to go ahead and fold it for you in advance so that you could see exactly how it was going to work with this card and the reason we needed to cut it down. So let's go ahead and just glue this onto our card base. And I like using multi-purpose liquid glue just because then I can wiggle it into place. I want to be sure that I have all of my edges nice and even. Now you'll see I did have to wipe a little glue away. I got a little um, excited and put a little bit too much on. But that's okay. If it does leave a little mark, we can always use a handy-dandy adhesive remover to take any excess away. And so I'm going to go ahead, add a little more glue, and then I'm just going to fold this side down. And give that a little bit of time to take. And there our card is. Okay, so now what we need to do is put that, that twisting piece in so that when you close it, it all twists shut. And so this is our pop-out piece, and now let's get to the twisting part. The twist part, again, you could use any color paper that you wanted, but I am um, going to use Sew Saffron to match the card that I'm making. So this is my template that I'm going to keep, and I have this at 2 and 3 fourths by 11 inches, and then I've scored it at 2 and 3 fourths, 5 and a half, and 8 and 1 fourth. So let me go ahead and get my piece that I've already um, prepared for you. And you won't be able to tell, but it is scored. So the first thing I'm going to do is just fold it in half, and then I'm going to fold back these pieces. And the score lines are already there, so it just makes folding really easy. I can grab my bone folder too and just give this a nice press. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to know where I'm gluing this on because this is going to have to be glued onto these pieces. So you're going to want to glue one side here and then one side down here. And so I'm going to make a little um, pattern so that I know exactly where these need to be glued. So I'm going to flip this over. See, this is going to be the pop-up part. So I want to make my pattern on the back side. So here's my back side, and again, I created a template so that it's easy for me to know where to put my glue. So again, I did this shy. In other words, it's just a tiny bit smaller than one and three eighths by two inches. I'm going to set this down right here along this fold line, and then I'm going to take my pencil again, and I'm just going to 
um, mark this square. So depending on where I mark it, if I mark it on this side here, then down here I need to mark it on this side. So let me go ahead and do that. And now let me show you what this looks like opened. So there it is. So here is the front of my panel. This is what's going to go in the center of the card. And I'll be gluing it right here and gluing it right here. So now let's go ahead and glue this to our card. So I'm just going to take glue and this little template and it helps me know exactly where to glue. So again, I'm using the multi-purpose liquid glue just because it's so easy for me to work with. Then I can go ahead and taking this template here, I do not want that to go higher than where my marks are. So I can line this up and just square it up and make sure that it stays within that pencil mark. So that one is on. Make sure this is all nice and even. Looks good. And now I'm going to go ahead and glue this one down here. So again, I know right where to put my glue because of the pencil mark. And I'm going to just put my glue right here. And then this is actually pretty easy because you can just like close it and it'll know right where to go. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to close this and it will know right where to go. And so you don't need to worry too much about that one if it's not exact because look, it opens up perfectly. So as long as you get that first one on really, really perfect, then the second one will just fall into place. And so that's the mechanics of making a pop and twist card. So I'm going to end this video now, and I hope you'll join me because in the next video, as I mentioned, it's a two-part video. The next video, we're going to learn how to decorate so you too can create this absolutely adorable birthday card using the carousel birthday stamp set and the cupcakes and carousel 6x6 paper stack from our 2017 Occasions catalog. Have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like to place a product order, be sure to visit me at my blog, which is www.stampingtoshare.com. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.